the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus through the will of God, to the holy ones, the ones being in Ephesus, and faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you all, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one having blessed us in all spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before a downcast of order, for us to be holy and blameless before him in love. Having pre-appointed us into the sun place through Jesus Christ into himself, according to the satisfaction of his will, into praise of the glory of his grace, which he highly favored us in the one beloved. In whom we have the redemption through his blood, the release from the transgressions, according to the riches of his grace, which he abounded into us in all wisdom and intelligence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his satisfaction, which he prepositioned in him, into a stewardship of the fullness of the times, to sum up all things for himself in Christ, the things upon the heavens and the things upon the earth, in him. In whom also we were appointed by lots, having been pre-appointed according to the purpose of the one working all things according to the determination of his will, into the purpose for us to be into the praise of his glory, the ones who have before hoped in Christ. In whom you also, having heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is a pledge of our inheritance, into the redemption of the possession, into the praise of his glory. On account of this, I also, having heard of the faith according to you in the Lord Jesus and the love, the one into all the holy ones, I do not stop giving thanks on behalf of you, making remembrance upon my prayers. In order that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, might give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in full knowledge of Him. The eyes of your heart enlightened into the purpose for you to know what is the hope of His call, what is the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of His power into us, the ones believing according to the energy of the might of His force, which He worked in Christ, having raised Him out from dead ones and having seated Him in His right in the heavenlies far above all rule and authority and power and lordship and of every name being named. Not only in this age, but also in the one coming. And he arranged all things under his feet and gave him to be head above all things to the assembly, which is his body, the fullness of the one filling for himself the all things in all things. Chapter 2 And you, being dead ones by your trespasses and sins, among whom you once walked according to the age of this world, according to the ruler of the authority of the air, of the spirit, the one now working in the sons of the disobedient one, in which also we all once lived in the lusts of our flesh, doing the wills of the flesh and of the minds, and we were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy, on account of his much love with which he loved us, even we being dead ones by the trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ, by grace you are saved. And raised us together and seated us together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus, in order that he might show for himself in the ages, the ones upon coming, the surpassing wealth of his grace in kindness upon us in Christ Jesus. For by the grace you are saved through faith, and this not out from you, the gift from God, not out from works, in order that a certain one might not boast for himself. For we are his product, having been created in Christ Jesus upon good works, which God prepared before, in order that we all might walk in them. Therefore, remember that you, once the nations in flesh, the ones being called uncircumcision by the ones being called circumcision in flesh made by hand, that you were at that time without Christ, alienated from the citizenship of Israel and strangers of the covenants of the promise, not having hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you, the ones once being far away, came to be near in the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, the one having made the both things one, and having loosed the middle wall of the partition, the enmity, in his flesh, having idled down the law of the commandments in dogmas, in order that the two, he might create in him into one new man, making peace. And he might reconcile the both things in one body to God through the cross, having killed the enmity in him. And having come, he preached peace to you, to the ones far away, and peace to the ones near, that through him we both have the access in one spirit toward the Father. Therefore then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, 
but you are citizens together of the holy ones and of the household of God, having been built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being cornerstone. In whom every building being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom also you are built together into a downwelling place of God in spirit. Chapter 3 Of this grace, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus on behalf of you, the nations, since indeed you heard of the stewardship of the grace of God, of the one having been given to me into you, that according to a revelation it was made known to me the mystery, just as I wrote before in a few words, toward which you are able, reading, to understand my understanding in the mystery of Christ, which to other generations was not made known to the sons of men, which to other generations was not made known to the sons of men, as it was now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in spirit. The nations are to be fellow heirs together and bodied together and partakers together of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, of which I came to be a servant according to the gift of the grace of God, of the one having been given to me according to the energy of his power. To me, the very least of all holy ones, this grace was given, to preach to the nations the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to enlighten all as to what is the stewardship of the mystery, of the one hidden from the ages in God, the one having created all things, in order that it might now be made known to the rulers and to the authorities in the heavenlies, through the assembly, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the purpose of the ages which he made in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access in confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I ask you not to lose heart at my oppressions on behalf of you, which is your glory. For this reason I bend my knees toward the Father, out from whom all lineage in heavens and upon earth is named, in order that he might give to you, according to the riches of his glory, power to be mighty through his Spirit in the inward man, Christ to dwell through faith in your hearts, rooted and grounded in love, in order that you might be able to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the surpassing love of the knowledge of Christ, in order that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Moreover, to the one being able to do exceedingly above all that we ask for ourselves or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the assembly and in Christ Jesus into all generations of the age of the ages, Amen. Chapter 4 Therefore, I myself, the prisoner in Lord, exhort you to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called, with all humility and gentleness, with long-suffering, forbearing of one another in love, being diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of the peace. One body and one Spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, the one over all and through all and in all. Moreover, to each one of us the grace was given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Therefore, it says, having ascended into a height, it captured captivity, it gave gifts to men. But the thing which ascended, what is it except that also the thing which descended into the lower parts of the earth? The one having descended, he himself is also the one having ascended above all the heavens in order that he might fill all things. And he himself gave the apostles, and prophets, and evangelists, and shepherds, and teachers, toward the equipping of the holy ones into a work of service into a building of the body of Christ, until we might attain all the ones into the oneness of the faith and of the full knowledge of the Son of God, into a complete man, into a measure of maturity of the fullness of Christ. In order that we might no longer be immature, being tossed and carried around by every wind of teaching in the slight of men, in trickery toward the craftiness of error. But speaking truth in love, let us increase things into him, who is the head, Christ, out from whom all the body, being fitted and joined together through every joint of the full provision, according to an energy in measure of one part each, the growth of the body makes into a building of itself in love. Therefore, this I say and testify in the Lord, no longer you to walk just as also the nations walk in the vanity of their mind, being darkened as to the mind, alienated of the life of God through the ignorance, the one being in them through the hardness of their heart, who, away from feeling, gave themselves over to the licentiousness, into a work of all uncleanness and greediness. But you did not so learn Christ, since indeed, you heard him and in him you were taught, just as truth is in Jesus, you to put away according to the previous conduct, the old man, 
the one being corrupted according to the lusts of deceit, and to be renewed as to the spirit of your mind, and to put on the new man, the one having been created according to God, in a state of justification and holiness of the truth. Therefore, having put away the lie, you speak truth, each one with his neighbor, because we are members of one another. You be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun set upon your anger, neither give a place to the devil. The one stealing, let him no longer steal, but rather let him labor, working good with his own hands, in order that he might have to share with the one having need. Every rotten word out from the mouth, let it not come out from you, but if something good, then toward a building of the need, in order that it might give grace to the one's hearing. And you do not grieve the one Holy Spirit of God, in whom you were sealed into a day of redemption. All bitterness, and anger and wrath and clamor and slander, let them be taken away from you with all evil. And you come to be kind ones into one another, compassionate, forgiving as to yourselves, just as also God in Christ forgave you. Chapter 5 Therefore, come to be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, just as also Christ loved us and gave himself over on behalf of us, an offering and sacrifice to God into an aroma of fragrance. But prostitution and all uncleanness or greediness, let them not even be named in you, just as is fitting as to holy ones, and obscenity and foolish talk or coarse jesting, which things were not proper, but rather thanksgiving. For this you know, knowing that every prostitute or unclean one or greedy one which is idolater, does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for on account of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not come to be partakers together with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light is in all goodness and a state of justification and truth, approving what is well-pleasing to the Lord. And do not have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather you even expose them. For it is shameful even to speak the things secretly coming to be by them, but all things being exposed by the light are manifested. For everything being manifested is light, therefore he says, Wake up the one sleeping, and rise up out from the dead ones, and Christ will shine upon you. Therefore, see carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. On account of this, you do not come to be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, in which is wastefulness, but be filled in spirit, speaking to yourselves with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and strumming with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks on behalf of all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to the God and Father, being subject to one another in fear of Christ. The wives to their own husbands as to the Lord, because the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the assembly, himself being Saviour of the body. But as the assembly is subject to Christ, so also the wives to the husbands in everything. The husbands love the wives, just as also Christ loved the assembly and gave himself over on behalf of her, in order that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water in a saying, in order that he himself might present to himself the glorious assembly, not having spot or wrinkle or anything of the such, but in order that she might be holy and blameless. So the husbands, also, ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. The one loving his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and warms it, just as also Christ the assembly, because we are members of his body. Opposite this, a man will leave behind father and mother and will be glued toward his wife, and the two will be into one flesh. This mystery is great, but I myself speak into Christ and into the assembly. Howbeit also, you, let the ones according to each one so love his own wife as himself, and the wife in order that she might fear the husband. Chapter 6 Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment in a promise, in order that it might come to be well with you and you will be long time upon the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but nourish them in discipline and admonition of the Lord. Bond servants, 
Obey to the Lord's according to the flesh with fear and trembling, in sincerity of your heart, as to the Christ. Not according to eye service, as men pleasers, but as bondservants of Christ, doing the will of God out from the soul, with a good mind, slaving as to the Lord, and not to men. Knowing that if each certain one might do a good thing, then this he will receive from the Lord, whether a bondservant or free. And the Lords, do the same things toward them, giving up the threat, knowing that also, yours and theirs is the Lord in the heavens, and partiality is not with him. Of the remainder, be strengthened in the Lord and in the might of his force. Put on the full armor of God, toward the result for you to be able to stand toward the craftiness of the devil. Because with us the struggle is not toward blood and flesh, but toward the rulers, toward the authorities, toward the world powers of this darkness, toward the spirits of the wickedness in the heavenlies. On account of this, take up the full armor of God, in order that you might be able to stand against in the evil day, and having worked down all things, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your loin in truth, and having put on for yourselves the breastplate of the state of justification, and having bound under for yourselves the feet in readiness of the gospel of peace, in all things, having taken up the shield of the faith, in which you will be able to quench all the arrows of the evil one, the one set on fire, and receive for yourselves the helmet of the one bringing salvation, and the sword of the Spirit which is a saying of God, through every prayer and petition, praying in every time in spirit, and into it being alert in every perseverance and petition concerning all the holy ones, and on behalf of me, in order that I might be given a word in opening my mouth in boldness, to make known the mystery of the gospel, on behalf of which I am an elder in chain, in order that in it I might speak boldly, as it is necessary for me to speak. And in order that you might also know the things according to me, what thing I practice, Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will make all things known to you. Whom I sent toward you into this very thing, in order that you might know the things concerning us and he might exhort your hearts. Peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace be with all the ones loving our Lord Jesus Christ in incorruption.